Welcome back here to the Patriot Sports Network for men's soccer action on Hartzler Field in Florence, South Carolina. I'm Alex Wober, the voice in the booth, bringing you Patriot soccer on this Saturday night. Before we get into the action, first let's check out our pregame interview with Patriots head men's soccer coach, Luis Rincon. All right, head coach Larice Rincon, the men's soccer team here with us ahead of the matchup uh, with North Greenville tonight. How are you and the men feeling ahead of this conference matchup? Very good. You know, very pleased with the performance uh, last three games. Unfortunately, uh, two out of the three, we, we didn't put the ball in the net. So it was hard to win the games, but last, last game we did, so we feel, we feel very good. Absolutely. I mean, what, what makes North Greenville a top-ranked team, and, and how do you plan on matching up with them? It just They have a uh, couple athletic players. Uh, they, they, like very, they have very technical players in the midfield. So, you know, they have, ha have a, a, a good season so far. So it will be interesting to, to see how they set up against us uh, because we have a similar or we try to play similar style of soccer so we'll just talk about to wrap things up the keys to success in order to get a victory over north greenville i th i think if if we fix few things uh defensively and we we move the ball that we have been doing it and and we are aggressive in the last third i think we should be successful absolutely well thanks for joining us head coach Luis rincon and uh good luck in the match Thank you very much. All right back here on the Patriot Sports Network. Today we have the number 18th ranked North Greenville University Crusaders coming into the swamp to face the Francis Marion University Patriots. The Patriots women's soccer program fell 3-0 to, to North Greenville in the previous game of the doubleheader. The Patriots men's program enters this season for their second year in Conference Carolinas. And this season, Francis Marion has been picked to finish second in the 2022 Conference Carolinas men's soccer preseason coaches poll, finishing one point behind Shawan University, who nonetheless, this North Greenville team beat Shawan 2-0. to zero. That was at their home venue. But definitely a note to take here looking at the starting lineups for both sides let's start off with North Greenville University in goal number one Michael Weber in the midfield number five Mike Paul Muse in the midfield number six Arthur Lee Ray midfielder number seven Rita Icarain and number eight midfielder Nico Ferraro number nine forward Renan McCuglia Midfielder number 10, Carlos Navarro. Forward number 14, Yesen Basias. Midfielder number 20, Hasakan Songvikase. And number 23, defender Cage Acker. And number 28, midfielder Tyler Brown. They're coached by Andrew Olick, assisted by Josh Gutierrez and Stephen Fight, their graduate assistant, Luis Neto. Now over for the home defending Francis Marion University Patriots. Let's take a look at their lineup. In goal, number zero, Andreas Capolo. Number four, defender, Shad Garcia. Midfielder, number six, Hugo Johnson. Midfielder, number eight, Paul Sapper. Forward, number 11, Alvaro Zamora. Midfielder, number 12, Andres Lagos. Midfielder, number 16, Kimo Lemke. Midfielder, number 20, Luke Geelan. Defender number 24, Sebastian Garcia. 27, midfielder Giancarlo Palma. And number 28, defender Jose Spasaro. The Patriots are coached by Luis Rincon. Assisted by Kevin Martin and their student assistant Santiago Ramirez. The athletic trainer for the Patriots is Kinsey Dunst Nelson. With the last minute to go, we'll take a look at some interesting stats that we have for both sides coming into this match. So far, North Greenville, an impressive start to the season. They are sitting so far at 4-2-2 two two at the moment. Two, three, and zero at home. One, one, and two away. Two, one in the conference. 
So it should make an interesting battle between these two squads. We appreciate your cooperation. As we are getting ready for first half action. As a reminder that Francis Marion University is a smoke-free campus and that no pets are allowed within the confines of the Griffin Athletic Complex. So this North Greenville roster that we're looking at, they brought a lot of guys from this team. It's probably one of the biggest backsides to our programs that we create here for uh, the athletic department. We couldn't even fit the conference standings at the bottom. That's how big this roster is for North Greenville. But just looking at it, tons of freshman talent throughout uh, and lots of senior veteran leadership as well as graduate students for this Crusader squad. Uh, and now the Crusaders are getting in there. Looks like they'll be sporting all black kits tonight, and the Patriots will be sporting all white. Their keeper will be representing red. And the North Greenville Crusaders were voted second in the region poll recently with Lee McCray coming in at ninth. Francis Marion, on the other hand, 3-4-2 and two overall, 2-1 two and one in conference play, 2-3-0 and oh at home, 1-1-2 one, one and two away. Some of the leaders for the Patriots this season, three goals for Jose Curvelo, one assist with a 600% shot percentage and a 1,000% shot on goal, five shots on goal for Curvelo. Javier Bayo with two goals and two assists. Hugo Johnson leads the Patriots, though, with three assists. Alvaro Zamora with one goal, two assists. And Nick Hunick with two goals. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Hartzler Field on the campus of Francis Marion University for this evening's Conference Carolina's men's soccer match between the North Greenville University Crusaders and your Francis Marion University Patriots. First, let's meet the starting lineup for the Crusaders from Tigerville, South Carolina. In goal, number one, a junior from Germany, Michael Weber. Number five, a graduate student from Germany, Paul Muse. Number six, a graduate student from France, Arthur Luray. Number seven, a senior from Morocco, Reda Icarain. Number eight, a junior from Italy, Nico Ferraro. Number nine, a junior from Brazil, Renan Mukaglia. Number 10, a senior from Colombia, Carlos Navarro. Number 14, a graduate student from France, Yusin Bessiet. Number 20, a sophomore from Thailand, Matt. Number 23, a senior from Greenville, South Carolina, Gage Acker. And 28, a freshman from Central South Carolina, Tyler Brown. Crusaders are coached by Andrew Ellett. He's assisted by Josh Gutierrez, Stephen Fight, and Luis Neto. And now the starting lineup for your Francis Marion University Patriots. In goal, number zero, a graduate student from Milan, Italy, Andrea Scapolo. Number four, a junior from Bogota, Colombia, Ted Garcia. Number six, a graduate student from Malmo, Sweden, Hugo Johnson. Number eight, a freshman from Gieben, Germany, Paul Sepper. Number 11, a graduate student from Madrid, Spain, Alvera Zamora. Number 12, a sophomore from the Gold Coast in Australia, Andreas Lagos. Number 16, a junior from Hamburg, Germany, Timo Lemka. Number 20, a graduate student from Aberdeen, the Netherlands, Luke Ehlen. Number 24, a senior from Asuncion, Paraguay, Sebastian Garcia. Number 27, a junior from Caracas, Venezuela, Giancarlo Palma. And 28, a freshman from Caracas, Venezuela, Jose Cesaro. Your Patriots are coached by Luis Rincon, and he's assisted by Kevin Martin and Santiago Ramirez. The athletic trainer is Kinsey Dunsnelson. Gentlemen, have a great match. We 
We are set for the first half of action now here in this matchup with the number 18 ranked North Greenville University versus Francis Marion University, the home defending Patriots. I'm just going to pull up North Greenville's soccer schedule real quick to just go over some of the teams that they have played so far. They opened up the season with Georgia Southwestern State and had a result of a 2-3 loss at their place to open up the season in America's Georgia. They followed up coming back home in Tigerville, South Carolina to play Coker University, which is right up the road here from Florence, South Carolina. And they beat them with a score of 2-1. to one. They played Mars Hill University in Mars Hill, North Carolina, beat them 2-1, to one, and then played Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina, lost 0-1 to one against a pretty big school up there in South Carolina. They tied Belmont Abbey at their place 2-2, two to two, beat Southern Wesleyan 5-1, to one, beat Chawan University 2-0, and if you're not familiar with the men's soccer program, last year Chawan University was the team to take down the Patriots and halt their NCAA tournament run. Lee's McRae College as well was the last team that the Crusaders ended up playing. Uh, that was also at Tigerville, South Carolina, which they tied 1-1. One so a lot of these opponents that the Crusaders have played have already been played by the Patriots as well. So it'll be interesting to see if any of that experience from both sides will translate in this match. But you know, this is the first of the two-game road trip for North Greenville. They've got to go come here to Florence and then go to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and then they'll be back home for the University of Mount Olive on the first. Impressive stuff, though, by the Crusaders this season. So far, leading the conference, I believe, in the standings. You know, looking at some of the statistics for this squad, their goal leader is Renan Makuglia with five goals, two assists, 12 points owned by the team, 17 shots, second on the team. And followed up by him, Carlos Navarro and Rita Ekerin. Ekerin with three goals as well as Navarro. Navarro, though, adding two assists. And we've got kickoff here in the first half of play. The traditional Patriot way to start the first half. And the long ball right into the box to get things going. Luke Geelan, though, in the box now. Sends the ball in. Batted out quickly that time by the Crusaders. And out of bounds throw in now for the Patriots. Hugo Johnson down there at the flag. Off of the Crusaders. Now a throw in. Geelan doesn't have a lot of space to go to. He's got to go to Zamora. Plays it back to Garcia. Over to Lagos. Who's going to switch sides to Sebastian Garcia now. And Sebastian Garcia, I'm not sure if that is a shot. What we will stat that as over here. We'll check one second here for our live stats to give us the official statistic on that play. Don't believe that they will count that as a shot. It'll just be a goal kick for the Crusaders. Larray sends a ball over top. And that's number nine, Renan Macuglia. Plays it back to the captain of the squad, Carlos Navarro. Back out to Navarro. Give and go, too much on it that time from number 14, Yesen Basias. Grad student forward out of Bordeaux, France. And Sad Garcia tries to get it towards Hugo Johnson. Switch sides that time. And the ball goes out of bounds. Throw in now for your Patriots.
Long throw in from Sebastian Garcia, intended for Hugo Johnson. Heavily pressured midfield. Lots of white jerseys around him. Kimo Limke chops it back and plays it to Zamora out wide. Got Luke Geelan going up the wing. Zamora is going to play Geelan. Geelan's going to send a ball in. Deflected. Stays in bounds. That's Loray this time. Long ball down the wing. It's going to get over the head of Sad Garcia. He's going to get back quickly, though. And boot it just up the field a little more for a Crusader throw in. Ball served into the box. Capolo, though, right there for the pickup. Rolls it out to Sebastian Garcia. Throw in now for the Patriots, Geelan. Ed Garcia switches it to Sebastian Garcia. Palma plays it back to Sapper. Sapper switches field to Zamora. Not going to get over the head of the defender that time. Gay Jacker. Zamora now. Ball to Sapper up the wing. Sapper tried to play it back into the box, but Zamora was not there. Long ball from LeRae. Looking for Tyler Brown. Long ball that time. That's a throw in, I believe, for the Patriots. Deep throw in for FMU, as a matter of fact. Dangerous pass from Garcia that time, playing around the edge of the box. And credit the Crusaders with a shot that time. Palma plays it to Geelan. Geelan's got Johnson in the box. Oh, and Johnson gets just behind him. It was a deflection there, I believe. Be a throw in now for Francis Marion. To the middle for Lagos. Back line play now. Spasaro and Ted Garcia. 
Over the top to Gila. Is he going to be able to get there? He won't, but a deep throw in now for the Crusaders towards the corner flag. Palma has Limka. Sebastian Garcia switches sides to said Garcia. Stat correction on our side there will not count as a shot for Yesen Besayas for the Crusaders. Ted Garcia's ball deflected back to the back line. Zamora pressuring. Sapper now with pressure on Brown. Hugo Johnson wins it. Lagos has Zamora. As Hugo Johnson, Sapper is deflected out of bounds. That one into the woods. Hope we'll find that one again. Throw in here for the Patriots, a deep throw in near the corner flag. Still a throw in now for the Patriots. Lagos has to play it quick to Sebastian Garcia, which is it to said Garcia. Over the top ball intended for Zamora. Palma there to finish. Goes off the volley, but didn't quite get all the power he needed under that. That's a pickup by Michael Weber that time. It's Lorray now. Plays it over to Acker. Play it back to his keeper, Weber. Crusaders are moving down the wing into the box. Good recovery by Spasaro. Able to end that run. All ball, says our official. Shot deflected. Eric Barnes says no contact. At least no contact before the touch of the ball. And that's for the Crusaders throw in now. Geelan, Palma, Zamora. They get stuck on the ball, but that'll be a free kick for the Patriots. Palma got some air on that one. Oh, wow.
free kick going the Crusaders way. Just in front of midfield. Or actually right behind midfield they play it. Played out near Sapper. Sapper uses his strength there to win the ball back. Pissarro back out to Sebastian Garcia. He gets it over Johnson. Out there is Acker. In the middle of that time, Ferraro taken away. Johnson gets stopped up that time by a group of Crusaders. Sebastian Garcia side, he's pressured. Sapper just shoved it out of bounds. Samora was right there for the outlet. It'll be a Crusader throw in there at midfield. Find Sapper. And that'll be going the Crusader way. It did come off the boot of Sapper at the end. Out to Acker. Ed Garcia plays it back to Geelan. He's pressured heavily. They're looking for Palma over the top. And that time, Larray just heads it out of bounds. It's a throw in here for FMU. Under 30 minutes to go now here in the first half. Zamora with it, edge of the box. Ball inside towards Johnson. And they'll just boot that one out of the box. Throw in here from Sapper. Here's Ted Garcia, out to Geelan. Timo Limke. That Sapper out there. Defended well that time by the Crusaders, back and forth. It's just a very defensive game so far. Nobody really has a lot of space to do much out there on both sides. Played out wide to Acker.
through the legs of Geelan, but Limke gets it back. Latest to Palma. Sebastian Garcia switches it, but quickly pressured. And they were looking for Palma, but it's kicked out of bounds by Acker. Elam plays it to Limka. Said Garcia. And to Hugo Johnson. Luke Geelan has it in the midfield. Out to Sapper. Sebastian Garcia into Lagos. Pissarro back over to Sebastian Garcia. And head coach Luis Rincon preaching patience as against a top-ranked team like North Greenville, you don't want to make mistakes. So being patient like this probably is the best strategy right now. Of course, you're eager to score goals, you're eager to win games, but at this point, it should be about containing what they do best and holding them, limiting them to, to what they can do out on the pitch. There's a more fighting through traffic Outside of the foot, pass to Johnson. And the Lagos, back over to Sebastian Garcia. Looks like Javier Bayo will be coming onto the pitch here, the next dead ball. Long ball was looking for Zamora from Garcia that time. A throw in here for Luke Gielan. And the substitute now. Giancarlo Palma comes off for Javier Bayo, who had a phenomenal performance on Wednesday. Now that Bayo is in the game, it should give the Patriots a bit of a spark up top. They look for him immediately. Johnson was looking for the follow-up rebound on that volley. Touch pass finds the feet of Spasaro. Scapolo with it. Or to Garcia. And just boomed out of bounds. Good touch by head coach Larice Rincon. Saving that ball. I've already lost one into the woods today. Good job of keeping that one down. Pissarro, long ball intended for, looks to be Johnson or Sapper. Johnson has it, edge of the box. Shot attempt, and right to the gloves that time of Weber. Good attempt if he maybe would have been able to keep it on the ground towards the left side, would have made Weber reach out for it a bit more, would have maybe had a chance. But just good positioning that time by Weber to get in front of the shot. Oh. 
Pressure this time from Sapper. Johnson, last second. I'll play it out wide here to Acker, most likely. Larray gives it up. Is Larray. Nice in the middle of the field. This time Navarro. There's Icarain. Brown outside. Sapper with lots of pressure. Sebastian Garcia boots it to midfield. Bayo right there, flicks it towards Hugo Johnson. Hugo Johnson cuts inside, looking for Zamora. Zamora takes a touch. Shot! Just right! I believe Weber would have gotten to it anyways. He, he had a good reach out for it to the right side. It's more wise to keep that one on the ground and make Weber have to stretch out for it. Don't give him anything easy. Long ball, Sad Garcia gets a foot on it. Flies out of bounds, that'll be the Crusaders' first corner kick, the first corner kick of the game as a matter of fact. And we'll have a substitution for each side now. Looks like Lagos is coming off now for not exactly sure who came onto the field for the Patriots. We're going to get a look at it. looks like to be Herman Fernandez. And it is Herman Fernandez. Corner kick is going to be played short. Icarain. Well defended. By Sapper. Fernandez pushing him back. Basically a botched corner kick by the Crusaders. And I don't mind short corner kicks, you know, when I'm playing FIFA or back in my playing days. But, you know, with an opportunity like that, under 20 minutes, you haven't created a single shot uh, on target or in general. Why not just send a ball into the box, see what happens? You know, you play it short that time, and you basically waste an opportunity at the corner flag. So a goal kick now for Scapolo. And definitely if you're going to play it short, it should be one pass and then, you know, maybe service right into the box. Maybe the corner kick taker doesn't like the angle of the flag, and he plays it off short for a better ball. Well, that time they just play it back and they keep working backwards and backwards and like I said, wasted corner kick opportunity for North Greenville. Score still remains nil nil. Eight under eighteen minutes officially. Patriots have three shots, two of those on goal. Long ball that time intended for Brown, but no way he's able to get there, and it goes out of bounds for a throw-in. Sebastian Garcia will send a long ball as well that goes out of bounds. Intended for Bayo. Ball to Larray. Hugo Johnson uses his physicality to get a ball towards Bayo. He's got a man on his back. Bayo cuts inside. Ball into the box. Headed out by Larray. Played down. and Hugo Johnson finds it. It's 
Zamora off the chest. May have to play Geelin. He does. Geelin with the ball in. Whips it in towards Bayo. Nobody behind Bayo. That may have had a good chance to be rebounded there by Paul Sapper. Icarain. Off the shoulder of said Garcia. Zamora through ball intended for Bayo. Couldn't get through the defense. Arthur Loray, the grad midfielder out of Paris, France. He's been playing defense tonight for the Crusaders. He's done a good job of limiting the Patriots' chances in the lower third of the field. So a free kick here. Going to be taken by Carlos Navarro. He plays it short back to Loray. Garcia chips it out to Hugo Johnson. Pressured immediately over to Sapper now. Looks to be Nick Hunick coming in here soon for the Patriots. Maybe coming in for Zamora or Luke Geelan. We'll see. Kimo Limka. A long ball for Zamora. Play to Geelan. Quickly spins out of it. Plays it back to Fernandez. Under 14 to go now here in the second, excuse me, first half. Score still remains nil-nil. Crusaders have yet to have a shot. Patriots with three so far, but the Patriots have yet to have a corner kick. So Any time the Patriots got down to their corner flags on the Crusaders' lower third, defended their passes and you know shots or anything well down there uh, to avoid the Patriots from getting any closer into that box. Scapolo. Sorrow. Uh-oh, now that the Crusaders found a little bit of an advantage that time, but Spasaro somehow recovers. I thought the Crusaders that time were going to have like a three-on-two advantage, but Spasaro with a fantastic recovery to the ball. Kimo Olimke with a couple of Crusaders on his back. He's going to speed through them. He's going to play it out to Geelan. To Olimke. He'll take a shot outside the boot. That one curves right. Substitution now. Two coming in. One for the Patriots. One for the Crusaders. Francis Marion University Athletics would like to thank the following sponsors. Brought to you by Adidas, Circle Park Behavioral Health Services, McLeod Regional Medical Center, Ken Jackson and Remax Professionals, Pepsi, McDonald's, Rain's Hospitality, including Fairfield Inn, Spring Hill Suites, Courtyard by Marriott, Comfort Inn, and Hyatt Place. King Cadillac Buick GMC. McLeod Sports Medicine. Chick-fil-A. Quincy Steakhouse. Little Caesars. La Quinta Inn and Suites. KFC and Arby's. Wa the Waffle House. Sparrow and Kennedy Tractor Supply. McCall Supply Incorporated. Western Sizzlin Steakhouse. State Credit Union and Zaxby's. Indescribably good. Conference Carolinas as well. The 2022-23 Conference Carolinas championship season is coming soon. Please visit conferencecarolinas.com.
Tigers.com slash championships to learn more about all the 2022-23 Conference Carolinas championships. Just a quick word from our partners in Conference Carolinas and some of our sponsors here at Francis Marion University. We appreciate all that you do for us. We continue to play here with 11.20 to go. The unit goes down. They'll call a free kick now for the Patriots at about midfield. Just a bit behind midfield, actually. And Spasaro plays it quickly out to Ted Garcia. And Zamora can't keep it in bounds. Zamora did not mean to do that. Apologizes quickly that time to, uh, looks to be number 11, Kalman Semedo. Sometimes when you, you throw the ball away uh, to the opponents on a throw in or a free kick, it can result in a word with the official or an automatic yellow card. I've seen it happen before. But, of course, Zamora, all in good fun. 10.05 left, nil-nil. Crusaders still looking for their first shot. They might, they might get one right here. 23, Gage Acker with the ball bend in to the top of the box. Sameda. Free kick now for Francis Marion. Zamora comes up a bit. Awkward. Looks to be Jose Curvelo as well on the other side waiting for the dead ball. Back to Fernandez. Long ball, but nobody there for the Patriots. I guess some miscommunication that time. Sayed Garcia. Not sure where he was going with that pass. Weber now out to his trusty defender, Mac. They switch fields, but they're heavily pressured now. Max splits defenders and finds Nico Ferraro. Long ball now, Geelan back there with Semedo. And Ikaran is right there. Fed Garcia. That's Navarro attempts a shot, but that one a little bit too much oomph on it as it heads into the back net behind the goal post. Alvaro Zamora will come off. He did come up a bit awkward on one of those plays. We'll see if he how quickly he comes back. Maybe He'll probably do, be done for this first half. We'll see how quickly he comes back for the second half. Luke Galen playing more of a defender role now. Back there with Spasaro. As well as said Garcia. Long ball from Sebastian Garcia is looking for Bayo. Substitution now for the Crusaders. Yeah. 
Will stay a throw in though for the Crusaders. Sid Garcia coming off now. I want to say that's Paul Visnaz out there, the sophomore defender out of Stavanger, Norway. He's played a few minutes this season so far for the Patriots. Opportunity Semedo, though, cleaned up by the Patriots defense. Long ball this time intended for number 16, Sebastian Duenas, senior forward out of Quito, Ecuador. Visnez, not sure again, him and Sai Garcia did the same exact thing pretty much. Not sure who the ball was intended for on those passes. Bayo was not that high up the field. Neither was Gielen, of course, who was right near Visnez or Hunick or Corvello. I have a little bit of miscommunication here between some of the Pats. Sebastian Garcia was looking for Carvalho. Carvalho with a good recovery that time to end the wing run by the Crusaders. Played back to Mac. Loray over to Acker. That time Ferraro finds the feet of Geelan and a throw in here. Probably going to be taken by Acker. Cleaned up by Fernandez, plays it back to Visnez with a man on his back. The dangerous play from some of the Patriot defenders so far is going to get them in trouble if they keep up with that. 3.05 to go, score still remains nil-nil. Elin gets it taken away by Samedo and finds the feet of Visnaz. Two and a half to go here in the first half. Not much has changed here in the stat line. The Crusaders found their first shot, but it went wide left. And they'll give a goal kick this time for Weber. 
Substitution coming in for the Patriots. Gabriel Cavarello. He's coming in for Paul Sapper, who hasn't left the pitch during this first half. Now with two minutes to go. Well, what we can say here through the first 43 minutes of this first half is it's been a defensive battle. That's really all you can say. Not has not been many shot opportunities, and when there has been, they've either been saved by Weber on the North Greenville side, or they've gone completely wide for the Crusaders. Bayo with a ball over Mack, finds Curvelo. Curvelo in the box, shoved down. No call given for the Patriots. I don't even think that was physical play. I just think that was a blatant foul. But again, I'm up here just calling the game. I don't, I don't get paid to officiate. One minute remaining. Minute to go now. Visness. Ball in the Hunick. It gets jumbled up though. Patriots can't find a foot on it. Patriots have been close in these last few seconds. A lazy pass that time by Cavarero, which could have been taken by a Crusader, but finds the feet of Sebastian Garcia. Geelan right there for the rebound. Still, again, the Crusaders are just limiting the Patriots from getting a corner kick. And that'll be a penalty kick for Francis Marion University. Now with 17.5 seconds on the clock. We've got 12 here on our side, but 17 and a half on the scoreboard. We'll see if there's a correction to that. It'll stay at 17. Javier Bayo going to take the penalty kick now for the Patriots. Bayo had an incredible last game. With one goal and two assists. See if he can get his third goal of the season now. And here we go. Goal! Lasso for Javier Bayo. Against number 18, ranked North Greenville University. The penalty kick that time. Foul by Sebastian Duenez. And I believe Jose Curvelo was the one to... Get the contact. Bayo with an incredible finish over Weber. The Patriots lead 1 0 here with 17 and a half seconds left. Ending a defensive battle between the both sides. Now, if the Patriots can play defense like they have done this whole first half, I don't see how they can't walk away with a win in this game. They've looked sharp defensively and they were patient, like Luis Rincon was talking about earlier in the first half. Patience does wonders as Javier Bayo puts in the first goal of the match off the penalty kick. Nine, Ten seconds. Geelan just going to send it downfield. And it's probably going to be just three, two, batted three, around by Weber. Yeah. And that's going to take us into halftime with the Javier Bayo penalty kick in the last 20 seconds of the match here. Let's take a look at some of the halftime stats on both sides. First of all, checking out the team stats uh, that we can see from right now. One shot for the Crusaders. Uh, the number 18th ranked North Greenville University Crusaders have been held to one shot by these Patriots so far. Patriots, though, with five shots. Two saves for Michael Weber for the Greenville North Greenville Crusaders, and they have one corner. The Patriots have yet to get a corner, uh, but that doesn't matter. At this point, they're up 1-0. They probably don't care how many corners they get as long as they walk away with this score right now. Let's take a look, though, at some of the individual stats. Uh, one shot so far for Johnson, Zamora, Lemke, and Palma. They have one shot on goal with Palma, one shot on goal with Johnson. Looking at the substitutes, Javier Bayo with the lone shot on goal, which ended up going in the back of the net with the penalty kick. Uh, Andreas Capolo has yet to record a save. The like we said, the Crusaders only have one shot here in the first half, so uh, Scapolo had a, had a quiet day in his box so far. For the North Greenville University, goalkeeper Michael Weber, one goal allowed, two saves 
Well, that's what we're looking at right now going into halftime. The Patriots, I want to say, controlled most of the possession in that half. We'll take a quick look, though, when we come back out of this halftime break. We'll see you right back here on the Patriot Sports Network. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily in the classroom, during practice, and in high-level competition. Aggerville has become title town. Our virtues set us apart. We daily work to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. This is Conference Carolinas. Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. So special. If there's a prettier place to go to college in the springtime, we don't know about it. Of course, we think it's the place to be all year round. Francis Marion University. Unparalleled beauty, unbeatable affordability, education that will last a lifetime. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily in the classroom, during practice, and in high-level competition. Aggerville has become title town. set us apart. We daily work to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. This is Conference Carolinas. Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. So special. If there's a prettier place to go to college in the springtime, we don't know about it. Of course, we think it's the place to be all year round. Francis Marion University, 
unparalleled beauty, unbeatable affordability, education that will last a lifetime. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily in the classroom, during practice, and in high-level competition. Aggerville has become title town. set us apart. We daily work to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. This is Conference Carolinas. Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. So special. If there's a prettier place to go to college in the springtime, we don't know about it. Of course, we think it's the place to be all year round. Francis Marion University. Unparalleled beauty, unbeatable affordability, education that will last a lifetime. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily in the classroom, during practice, and in high-level competition. Aggerville has become title town. set us apart. We daily work to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. This is Conference Carolinas. people you see families 
huge families. And you know why all those people are there? Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. So special. If there's a prettier place to go to college in the springtime, we don't know about it. Of course, we think it's the place to be all year round. Francis Marion University. Unparalleled beauty, unbeatable affordability, education that will last a lifetime. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily in the classroom, during practice, and in high-level competition. Agerville has become title town. set us apart. We daily work to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. This is Conference Carolinas. Because this is the very first one, the very first graduate. So special. If there's a prettier place to go to college in the springtime, we don't know about it. Of course, we think it's the place to be all year round. Francis Marion University. Unparalleled beauty, unbeatable affordability, education that will last a lifetime. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily in the classroom, during practice, and in high-level competition.
All right, right back here on the Patriot Sports Network with a phenomenal end to the first half in the 45th minute. Javier Bayo put in a penalty kick to take the lead on number 18 ranked North Greenville University. If the Patriots can keep what they did going on here in the second half as they did in the first half, defensively, that's the most important thing is they held the Crusaders to one shot on offense. Now, this is a Crusader team that is incredibly quick. We have noticed that from the first half. They've got a lot of quick guys in the midfield. Uh, their defense is very reactive. They haven't allowed a lot of stuff for the Patriots, even with five shots, like you can see on the uh, the big board over there on the opposite side. Zero corner kicks for the Patriots. They've had a lot of chances in the lower third of the field, but deflections just haven't really gone their way. When we get started here with kickoff, long ball, the tradition here, I feel like in Conference Carolinas, just send it deep first play, see what happens. You never know. The Crusaders are going to have a throw in here, and we'll see what they do with it. They're trying to bob and weave through the Patriots' white jerseys there, about four of them surrounding Navarro. Ball played behind that time for Sebastian Duenas, who actually gave up the penalty at the end of the first half for the Crusaders. Mack plays it over to Loray. Over to the other side for Acker. Mack's pass was deflected by Zamora. They'll give a free kick here, though, for North Greenville. That's Mack, the midfielder sophomore out of Bangkok, Thailand, who draws the foul. Oh, riser that time. Semedo tries to possess it, but it's going to be a goal kick here for Scapolo. And let's take a look and find out how many clean sheets Scapolo has on the season. We're going to take a quick look here and update you with that. And also, in other Francis Marion University Patriot news, if you didn't watch earlier today at 1 o'clock, your women's volleyball team took down Chuan University with a clean sweep, three sets to zero against the Hawks. The volleyball team will be back in action Saturday at home against Southern Wesleyan University. Sebastian Garcia sends a ball, that one into the feet of Tyler Brown. Hugo Johnson out to Luke Geelan. And looking at Scapolo, he has approximately three shutouts so far. And he's looking to add to that tally tonight with a fourth one. Cavarero now trying to get around Mack. Mack defends it out of bounds. Throw in here for the Patriots. Hemo Limke in the box. Couldn't get around Brown that time. Long ball this time for Semedo out of bounds. Throw in for FMU. Played back that time, Spasaro. We do not see Sad Garcia starting on the pitch for the Patriots here in the second half. He did come off in the first half with an unknown injury it looked to be for substitution for Paul Visnez who comes out to start this half. So Javier Bayo now tied for the most goals on the squad with threes tied with Jose Carvalho. Sebastian Garcia close call that time with McCuglia 
on the back. Zamora, though, plays it off to Johnson. Plays it on the wing to Cavarero. Back in the box. Deflected. Finds Lagos, who heads it back into the box. Lagos able to get up quick. Sebastian Garcia, though, going to intercept the pass intended for Icarain. Scapolo plays it back to Sebastian Garcia. And back to Scapolo. Visnez, long ball intended for Bayo, gets towards Johnson. Johnson, though, they call a free kick this time against Johnson. I thought it was just physical play towards the ball from this angle, but that is on the opposite side of the field, so I will trust the judgment of our official today, Eric Barnes. Going to be a throw in here. Luke Galen going to take it. Getting closer down the field now. Right in front of the Patriots sideline. And Limke sends it out of bounds, intended for Geelan. Going to be a Crusader throw in now right at midfield. There's Brown out there, guarded by Zamora. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily. Our current 13 member institutions work hard daily to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. Please visit conferencecarolinas.com to learn more about Conference Carolinas and make sure to keep up with all the great things happening in Conference Carolinas through social media. You can follow Conference Carolinas on Twitter and Instagram at Comp Carolinas. Make sure to also like Conference Carolinas on Facebook at facebook.com slash conference carolinas. Keep up to date on all of those things happening in Conference Carolinas by visiting conferencecarolinas.com daily. Maintaining possession here is the name of the game for the Patriots. Keeping that possession... Not giving it up too quickly. As the Crusaders are putting a lot of pressure on top of the Patriots' back line. Luke Gila now with a lot of space. He's going to find Javier Bayo on the wing. Here comes an, a counterattack now for the Patriots. Into Gila. Lays it off to Bayo. Plays it into Cavarero. Saved. Gila can't put it back. Saved by Weber that time would have been goal number two for the Patriots, and they could have had a 2-0 lead, but that does give them their first corner kick of the match. So this will be interesting to see now. They've had a couple of good corner kick set pieces throughout the season. Michael Weber does not like the call, thinks that it's absolutely a goal kick. Cavarero comes off now. It looks to be Paul Sapper coming back on the pitch. I believe it is. We'll see if the Patriots play it short as Limke is there for the outlet pass. 
but Hugo Johnson's going to take it. Johnson plays it short near post, and Mack is able to head it out of bounds for a throw-in. So just like that, corner kick now a throw-in. Throw-in going to be taken by Paul Sapper. Going to be a free kick here for Weber. Icarain bobbing and weaving through the Pats midfield. Going to send the ball the opposite side to Semedo. Pressured by Geelan. Ball into the box. Capola right there to hop on it. Johnson gets a touch on it over to Bayo. Makes a swing around Bayo. Bayo pushes it forward, finds Johnson on the wing. Kimo Limke and Tulagos. Pulls us over to Sebastian Garcia. Down wing to Sapper. Sapper plays Johnson. Defended well by Mack. And that time Sapper's corner, or attempt that time, Goes off the legs of Mack for a corner kick. The Patriots' second corner kick. So zero corner kicks in the first half for FMU. Two already here. Not even through about 10 minutes. Just over 10 minutes, actually. Are they going to play it short this time? That'll be interesting. They do. Johnson with the ball in. Galen just heads it the other way. No call offsides that time on Luke Geelan. Lagos with pressure. Johnson was the closest there, but it gets back to Larray. Long ball from Mack. Tomato was not ready for that run. I don't even think Tomato would have made it there. That ball had so much speed on it. It'll be a goal kick now for Scapoli. Plays it quickly to Visnes. Saro comes up quick, has to head it forward. Ball inside, Limke pressure. Icarain with it at the edge of the box. That was a chance that time for the Crusaders. That was number nine, Macuglia. It's a free kick given for the Crusaders. 
physical play going up for the header. Zamora just inches away from taking that ball away from Brown. Kimo Limke, he's got Zamora on the wing, wide open. Nobody sees him. Zamora versus Mac now. Blocked. Great defense that time by Mac, able to recover. And a good save by Weber that time, getting in position. We've got another injury here for the Patriots. I think that's Kimo Limke down for FMU. And it looks like they're going to bring on Herman Fernandez. We'll take a quick break here on the Patriot Sports Network and give you some information on that injury when we return. Conference Carolinas is where tradition is unmatched and excellence is earned daily in the classroom, during practice, and in high-level competition. Tigerville has become title town. Our virtues set us apart. We daily work to build champions in body, mind, and soul. It's who we are. This is Conference Carolinas. Right back here on the Patriots Sports Network. Quick cold open there as we have an injury for the Patriots. That's the midfielder, Kimo Limke. Who has to get walked off the field by athletic trainer, Kenzie Dunst-Nelson. He was helped up by Crusader goalkeeper, Michael Weber. Although this has been a competitive matchup, these two sides have a lot of respect for each other. Visnez right there plays it back to Spasaro, and Spasaro just nails it past midfield. Hugo Johnson pressures Weber. Just under 30 minutes to go now here in the first half. Sapper almost gets his foot under it. There's Brown down the ling. Into the box now. Defended well by Spasaro. And they'll say that one finds the back of the net. Yellow card immediately for Andreas Capolo. We're waiting to see the official call on this play. I believe that will stand as a goal for North Greenville University off of the volley. And I think the Patriots thought that that one went out of bounds, but I don't think we'll be able to go back and check that one out as nobody official-wise or, or any of us here in the production studio had an angle at that. So we will, I guess we'll never know what exactly happened on that play. If that went out of bounds, if that stayed in bounds, I'm not exactly sure. Scapolo was very unhappy about that. An instant yellow card to him for approaching the Crusader celebration. So all even now at 1-1. But as we know, this Patriots team, they don't give up easily. And I'm sure that the number 18th ranked North Greenville University doesn't either. Hugo Johnson now with an attempt. Weber saves it. Zamora 
Tried to get it from Larray. That's actually Icarain now who's playing around in the box dangerously. Pistonez that time, good defense. Geelin heads it forward back to midfield. Pass into Brown. Throw in here now for FMU. Flicked back by Zamora. Physicality that time shown by Sebastian Garcia. Good stand there by Luke Geelan. Bad touch. I'm not sure if that went off of two Patriots that time, but Nick Hunick is awaiting his arrival on the pitch here for the second half. Chip over the top of the back line into Scapolo. Vistnez with a long ball, way out of bounds. Might have been a deflection on that, but they'll still give it for the Crusaders. The official goal for North Greenville coming from Paul Muse. All sent towards Sebastian Garcia. This news can't get underneath it. And that's a corner kick now for North Greenville University. Vista didn't think he touched it. Neither did the entire Patriot squad. Almost another volley chance for the Crusaders. Johnson plays it forward to Sapper, who puts a defender on it, his butt that time. Sapper with it on the wing, double teamed, and sent into the box that time. Nobody there for it. Zamora was covered by Mack. Sebastian Garcia plays it to Fernandez. Under 25 to go now here in the second half. Score still remains one all. Crusaders working for a run here. Spisaro heads it back towards Hugo Johnson, who goes down with the ball. Scapolo with an easy cleanup that time. In the middle there, Herman Fernandez. Man on his back. Plays it quickly to Zamora. 
Back to Spisaro in the back line. Rusnez with it past midfield. We'll have Curvelo and Hunick coming in now for the Patriots. Ball played to Geelan. Flicked out of bounds by the Crusaders. And we'll get some substitutions now for FMU. Looks like Kimo Limke will also come back onto the pitch. Jose Curvelo coming on for... Javier Bayo, Nick Hunick on for Andres Lagos. And Kimo Limke, we're waiting to see what happens with him here, if he's going to come on as a sub or not. I'll wait for the next one. Luke Gila with it. Ball in the box, headed out. Fernandez was the closest one there. Sapper. Looking for Curvelo. That's going the Patriots way off the foot of Mack. To Fernandez. Sapper plays it into Curvelo. Carvalho has to play it back to Sebastian Garcia, who's looking for Zamora. And that one is just absolutely bombed by Sebastian Garcia, way out of bounds. And now we'll have a couple subs come on for North Greenville. Kimo Limke as well coming back on the pitch for Hugo Johnson. Johnson has played a heavy amount of minutes so far for the Patriots in this match. Kick from Weber. Ball played forward. Semedo trying to get there. Scapolo cleans it up. Rolls it out to Geelan. Sapper trying to get around Icarain. In the middle to Zamora. Zamora has Geelan on the wing. Inside the box now, Geelan. And that'll be this Patriots' second penalty kick off the hand of a Crusader. Penalty kick number two. The Patriots have a chance to take the lead now with a handball inside the box. Some of my excitement scared some of the production members up here, but... It's worthy to get excited about. Now the Patriots have a chance to go back up on top over the number 18 ranked North Greenville. And guess who will take it? Alvaro Zamora because Javier Bayo came off. Zamora is the next penalty kick taker. And we'll see what happens here versus Michael Weber. And here goes the run up from Zamora. And it's in the back of the goal. The Patriots have expanded the margin now to one goal. I'll take a quick replay at this here. Zamora takes a exaggerated run up and backs it in the left side. Early movement that time by Michael Weber gave Zamora an easy choice where to place that ball. And we have a 2-1 ball game here. Patriots lead by one with 20-15 to go on the clock. The handball absolutely inside the box. Good call from Eric Barnes there to see that. And I'm sure the reactions from the Patriots on the field, it, you know, ignited that call from Barnes. But nonetheless, Zamora puts it in the back of the net and the Patriots lead by one now with just under 20 minutes to go. A 
I'll tell you what, this is probably the best match I've seen the Patriots play this season, especially just against the ranked opponents. I feel like they, they awake, and after last game's win, I feel like they definitely have awoken. Offensively, uh, they've become locked down, which they pretty much always have been, uh, primarily a defensive team that likes to possess the ball. But recently, these last two games, they've looked incredible uh, in the lower third of the opponent's field. Saffer going to take this throw in. Hunick trying to get around Mac. Hey, no call free kick here for the Crusaders. Play quickly to Mac. And North Greenville at this point now down one. They had it tied after the put-back goal for Paul Muse, but you kind of got to play with a sense of urgency now. You're coming in as a ranked team, and I'm sure any ranked team, whatever sport it is, they don't want to lose that ranking. So well, it's going to be interesting to see what North Greenville does here with the 18 and a half minutes. Free kick awarded for the Crusaders just past midfield. Long ball inside the box. Curvelo there to recover. Sapper with a nice turn. Curvelo, bad pass, but Fernandez able to clean it up. It's a more almost shields Loray from even having a chance on the ball. Ball whipped into the box, headed out by Fasaro. There's Mack with it for the rebound. Plays it out there for Navarro. Navarro bends the ball into the back of the box. Geelan heads it. And that hits the flag, so it becomes a corner kick for the Crusaders. Their third corner kick here of the match. We'll see if North Greenville plays it short, if they're going to just try and whip one into the box. Their first corner kick attempt didn't exactly go as planned. And they will play it short immediately. Let's see if they do sort of the same thing here. They're going to take a shot, and it's going to be deflected. Scapolo able to just clean that one up very easily. 16 and a half to go. Scapolo going to punt this one. He's got himself a leg. Over the head of Mac. Multiple Patriots pressuring. Closing off passing lanes. They'll give that one to North Greenville. It comes off the boot of Nick Hunick. Back over to Larray. Curvelo with it now. Curvelo, one of the top goal scorers for the Patriots. Just finds his way to the ball no matter where or what position he's playing on the field. Sapper with the pressure. They're forcing the Crusaders to play it back and deflecting a lot of their shots. This has been a good defensive battle. I guess you could say it was a defensive battle in the first half. Here in the second half, it's been more about playing with a sense of urgency and who's going to capitalize on whose mistake first. Scapolo having to go back. Runs into the post, but comes up with the catch. 
See if he rolls this one out quick, and he does. Out to business. Under 15 to go. We'll have two more subs looking to come in for FMU. It might be Palma and Johnson coming back out there on the pitch. Vistanez sends a ball to Curvelo. Him versus Larray here. Larray down the line. He's got Acker. Keelan steps up. That's a throw in now for the Crusaders with 14 to go here in the second half. Zamora just gets a foot on it, pushes it past midfield. Head coach Luis Rincones, you know, emphasizing pressure here. You can't let them just have the ball and have all this space in the back line because the last defender is in front of midfield here, so you know that the Crusaders are going to put on all that they can in their attacking. Defended well by Sapper. They don't call out of bounds. As from this angle, that was a blatant and obvious out of bounds ball, but I understand it is tough to see with lots of players in the area. Scapolo comes out and punches it out. Zamora gets around. Icarain now putting pressure on Zamora. Finds Curvelo up the wing. Geelan's pass deflected out of bounds, and that'll be two subs now for the Patriots. And it will be Palma, as well as Hugo Johnson. Hugo Johnson comes on for Nick Hunick. Looks like Giancarlo Palma. Not exactly sure who he's come on the pitch for. And it might be Jose Curvelo, and I think it is. Shot from Fernandez, back of the net! Goal! That one from Spasaro finds the back of the net. Is it Spasaro or Fernandez? It is Fernandez, the freshman defender. Herman Fernandez with his first goal of the season for FMU. And that puts the Patriots up 3 to 1. Make sure and celebrate in front of the camera for us out there. Herman Fernandez, absolutely loving it. Three to one now, 12.01 left here in the second half. And the Patriots looking good against the number 18 ranked North Greenville University. My apologies on the mix up there. Fernandez is 29, Spasaro is 28. It did look like Spasaro came out from the back line and just booted one in the back of the net. But it was Fernandez who came on as a recent substitution. Uh, Fantastic job to put away that goal. Give yourself a two-goal advantage here with just under 12 minutes to go. All you got to do now if you're the Patriots is play that defensive ball that you've played all game long. Hold the Crusaders to little shot opportunities. The Crusaders have had two shots, two shots in this game. The number 18 ranked Crusaders team has been held to two shots, three corner kicks, while the Patriots have two corner kicks and 11 shots. Ball goes behind the net that time. Going to be a goal kick for Scapolo. Just an incredible outing for the Patriots in these two past two games against conference opponents. They're got, about to send in Javier Bayo, who's done all that he has for these last two games for the Patriots. All his career with Francis Marion University, he's been phenomenal. Bayo with the first goal for the Patriots at the end of the first half, coming off a penalty kick, Zamora. Zamora putting in the second one, and that time the freshman, Carmen Fernandez, putting away the third goal for the Patriots in the back of the net.
Crusaders definitely at this point have to play with a, a sense of urgency. They've got to get shots off no matter what. They want any chance at saving themselves from falling out of the top 25. They've got to put their foot on the gas. Johnson almost able to get a foot on it from Weber. And a free kick now for North Greenville. Uh, Coach Louis Stringcone stressing everybody to get back. Don't allow anybody to be a free runner in this defense against the Patriots. Michael Weber going to take the free kick, actually. Goalkeepers usually have the biggest foot, the biggest boot on them, and try to get it inside the box, but it's just cleared out by Sebastian Garcia. Up 3-1, it would be really cool to see Javier Bayo come on with his brother, Miguel Bayo. And I'm not sure if that is who is on the sideline beside him. It could be Juame Bonet, could be Miguel Bayo. We'll see up here in a couple of minutes. Next dead ball, we should see that substitution. And Kimo Limke comes up awkward once again after that tumble. Fernandez down line to Palma. He's defended by Mack. Palma just a one step maybe just from getting that ball and getting by Mack. Ball into the box. Scapolo picks it up. Under nine to go. Patriots still holding on to that 3-1 lead. Sapper wanted the call that time. Crusaders, though, find it back. Tomato. Sebastian Garcia steps up, boots it past midfield. And basically, whenever that happens, it's basically resetting the entire Crusader offensive game plan. So... At this point, it's not a bad idea to just boom the ball away. Probably eliminates a good 15 seconds off the clock. It allows them to just reset and gives the Patriots a chance as well to reset their defensive formation. Scopolo. Long ball into the feet of Johnson. Over to Zamora, looking for Palma. Another handball that time, but play continues for the Crusaders. Long ball towards Geelan's side. That's going to be Semedo. Deflected off of Geelan and a corner kick now with 7.15 to go. Substitutions for the Patriots. That's Andres Lagos that's coming back out out there. And Javier Bayo, it looks like. I believe the two coming off for the Patriots, Alvaro Zamora and Herman Fernandez coming off. So two goal scorers for the Patriots coming off here in the last seven minutes of play. 6.59 on the clock. We'll have a late substitution here for the Crusaders. Paul Mews coming off. That's number eight, Nico Ferraro coming back on the pitch. Ball served in by the Crusaders. Vesna just bats it out of the box. 
Best thing to do in that situation. Cannot risk a handball or a penalty kick in this situation. And Kimo Limke almost did get contact on his elbow that time. 6.40 to go. Patriots up 3-1. Let's see if they can hold on here in the last six and a half to go. Crusaders now with a chance past midfield. And Sebastian Garcia once again sends it past midfield. Basically has to reset both sides. Samedo there with pace. That's off the foot of Samedo. They're going to give that for the Patriots throw in. Substitution once again here. Francis Marion's Gabriel Carvero coming on for Giancarlo Palma. Five nineteen on the clock. Crusaders here with a sense of urgency playing the outlet passes down line, trying to work the corner flag. I can definitely understand the, the Crusaders wanting to get as many opportunities, set pieces, anything like that here in the last five minutes. Anything helps this offense down 3-1. Johnson with heavy pressure that time on Mack. I tell you what, Max done a good job on most of the plays that he's been involved in today. Other than that, though, he has had Patriots all over his back here in the second half. Larray with the ball on the other side. And kept alive by Samedo. Sapper shields off Samedo. No call. Clean defense that time by Sapper. Bayo tried to get in front of Larray that time. Lagos, ball to Johnson. Three and a half to go. And I'm not going to call anybody a flopper because I'm not that kind of person to assume or initiate that kind of insult. But in these, the last few minutes, we will see a lot of players probably falling down on the pitch, trying to draw fouls, free kicks, whatever they can do uh, to earn that Oscar-worthy performance here in the last three minutes. I have another substitution here. Both sides getting subs now. I'm not sure if Herman Fernandez is coming back in. It looked like he is. We actually have a player down. That's Kimo Limke again for the Patriots. Something just aggravating his leg tonight. Kenzie Dunst Nelson out there doing a great job as the athletic trainer getting our beloved Kimo Limke off the field. Herman Fernandez will come back on the pitch. And if the score stays like this, when the final buzzer goes off, we will be talking to freshman Herman Fernandez after the game to get his insights on how he feels his performance was tonight. Hopefully the Patriots can hold on to this lead. Three minutes on the clock. They lead 3-1. 
They have a deep throw in here for the Crusaders down at the corner flag. Bayo with it. Tries to go over the top. Ball intended for Semedo. And they'll call that one. Yeah, the jersey pulling absolutely. Eric Barnes is 100% right. It was going to be calling regardless. We'll have a time stoppage now and a free kick given for the Crusaders. Played quickly this time. Two and a half to go. The Crusaders, like I said, urgency. Got to play with that sense of urgency. You have got to have shots here. Only two shots the entire game for the number 18th ranked North Greenville University. Not a sight you would have thought you would have seen. Not a sight you would have thought you would have seen. Yeah, that sounds about right. I don't know if you would have seen that stat, though, on the scoreboard before this game. Would you have predicted that? I certainly wouldn't have. That one headed towards Scapolo out of bounds. Another corner kick given for the Crusaders. And I'm sure they're going to accuse the Patriots of a handball or maybe a foul here inside the box. Uh, like I said, when you're playing with that sense of urgency, you're trying to get any call that you can get. You're trying to get as many chances and many set pieces as you can. Goal kick now, though, for the Patriots. Capolo now with the goal kick. They're going to say to ring on play with a minute 13 on the clock. Scapolo going for a big kick this time. Put some backspin on it. One minute remaining. Garcia just heads it to midfield. There's Fernandez. Plays it out to Cavarero. Cavarero is going to have an opportunity. He still has it. Plays it to Bayo. Bayo one on one. Bayo with the shot deflected. Back to Bayo. 45 seconds to go. He's going to just shield it at the corner flag. Smart move by the veteran. And the Crusaders come back with it. 2v1 there on Bayo. Bayo trying to shield it at the corner flag. Crusaders obviously probably would have came up with that one. Or it would have been a goal kick for Michael Weber regardless. The final 20 seconds countdown here. Patriots up 3-1. And Lagos eight, is just going to send this one downfield. Bayo was actually off one, sides on the play. Zero. And the final horn rings. That one will not count. That's the fourth goal here in the match. As the, the horn went off. The Patriots, though, Taking the final score of 3-1 to one against the 18th ranked North Greenville University. Let's check out some of the final result stats for both sides. Starting with the North Greenville University Crusaders. Let's take a look at individual stuff as well as team stats. Team stats looking at the board right now. Three shots, six corner kicks for the Crusaders. Patriots had 12 shots. And two corner kicks, though. Andreas Capolo, no saves, but Michael Weber with five. So just an overall good match by the Patriots. Let's take a look at some individual stuff, though. On the North Greenville side, uh, the leader for shots comes in with one shot. So three shots final for the Crusaders. One from Muse, who got the lone goal. They are in the beginning of the second half. Larray with one shot, as well as Navarro with one shot as well. The keeper, Michael Weber, as we said, three goals allowed, five saves. Now looking at the Patriots side, let's take a look at the leaders for them shot-wise. And let's talk about some of the goal scores tonight. For the substitutes, two shots, one goal for Javier Bayo. Two shots, one shot on goal for Gabriel Cavarero. One goal, one shot for Germán Fernández in his First goal of the season, I want to say. I'm going to check that just to make sure. 
And that is correct. That's his first goal as a Patriot in his freshman campaign. Let's look at Alvarez Zamora with three shots, two shots on goal, one goal. Hugo Johnson with two shots, two on goal, one shot for Kimo Limka, one shot for Giancarlo Palma, which was also on goal. The Francis Marion University men's soccer team will return to action Wednesday at home. It looks to be against Chawan University at home, the team that they played in the Conference Carolinas championship game ultimately lost, but they will be on the road at Belmont Abbey October 1st. They'll have a two-game road trip October 1st starting at Belmont Abbey, but they will be at home playing Chawan this upcoming Wednesday, as well as the Francis Marion University women's volleyball team will be playing this next Saturday against Southern Wesleyan University. This has been a phenomenal presentation of Patriots soccer here on the Patriots Sports Network. What a fantastic game we all got to envision tonight and, and see here at Hartzler Field in Florence, South Carolina. I'm Alex Wober. I can't wait to see.